Um, okay. Okay, um, okay. Mm. Learning. A word to describe a way of getting knowledge, information, and skills that you don't know. People get it from reading, experience, and being taught by a person. The mainstream norm is, you go to a school, hear teachers presenting, and you learn something. This applies for many education systems, and people are forced to conform to it. However, there are people different from others called neurodivergents. They see the world differently, and their brain works in many different ways. This is called neurodiversity. Education systems are designed specifically by and for neurotypical people. This poses challenges for neurodivergent people, and neurodiversity is often seen as challenging by neurotypicals. The fact is, is that neurodivergent people just learn differently to most neurotypicals. However, they are forced to conform to a specific learning system which doesn't accommodate their specific needs. When these people are learning about neurotypical norms, they also have their own way of teaching and learning about the world they live in. This is called atypical learning. My name is Masia Taule Aulo. I am a film director and a university student on the autism spectrum. I am different from other people and I have seen things that many neurotypicals would not understand. I had a feeling there might be different people like me, and I felt like meeting them. Um, my name is Callum Devos. I am 22 years old. I, uh, I recently completed a diploma of film and television, and um, I am diagnosed with ASD, of autis autism spectrum disorder. So, my name's Luke Williams. I'm 23 years old. I'm studying a cyber security cert four. And what was the last question, sorry? What condition diagnosis are you? Oh, yeah, ADHD. Hi, my name is Aidan McFarlane. I am 23 years old. I am studying screen and media certificate four at Swinburne University. And I uh, was diagnosed with ADHD. It is June, 2022. At university, I had to think of an idea for a short documentary. I've thought of an idea where I can talk to people that are also on the autism spectrum or that have any other neurodivergent condition. The idea seemed interesting as it was a topic that was not explored in university at the time. So my documentary idea was considered and I have been assigned a crew to help me produce my documentary. We put up posters and scattered for people that were neurodivergent and we found a couple. And so it begins. How do you um, see the world? Like, for example, do you see things with a blurry line? Do you, um, does something look really intense to you? Do you, do you hear things differently? Do you see things differently from other people? I think I just see the world as the world is. Like how people are just different than me, but but, I, but I'm like similar towards them in, in different ways. The world can be like, can be a bit scary sometimes. Like, like sometimes the world like does things unexpectedly that I don't feel like prepared for that, that scares me in a way. Like, like uh, I'm not, like I don't like it when the world sometimes, it, it, like they, like with people and uh, places I go to, like they, they change. Like change is sometimes a big scary thing I face to see the world. But apart from that, uh, 
I don't feel like I see things that no other person don't see, like a, a blurry line or fuzzy lines or anything like that. I, I don't see any of that stuff. I'm reasonably good at picking up like other people's things. I sometimes like, in terms of like blurred lines, I sometimes can't sense if someone's getting annoyed. Like I've got a radar on me to know it, but I see it as very straightforward, but very spontaneous, like everything's ever changing. It's pretty straightforward how you should behave in the world, but it's also like always changing. So you gotta like adapt. Like I can do a lot of things in a week, but like, I don't know, I feel the same about what I'm doing. Mm, you feel the same about like what you're doing? Mm. As in, is it like hard for you to um, adapt? I think it's easy. I think like when scenery changes, like I'm the first person to just snap into the next scene. It will just be like coming from lunch to go do your work and stuff. And I mean, this isn't like the world changing. Everyone has to deal with it, like eating lunch and going to class. But some people just like, man, they take a real long time to just like kick into gear. And like some people just start doing their work, but then like, I'll just like, by the time like I walk through the door, I'm like just ready to do whatever's next. And I was like, forget, I've got a burger in my hand and I'll just like put it down or something. I'm like very adaptable. I got like up this morning actually and I was dressed within a minute of getting out of bed and I had like a lift to school. So it only like took me like three minutes to get out of my like bed sheets and then be at the door. What I think is different to how I perceive the world and to how others perceive the world is chalked up to my cognition. I think the way my brain interprets and interfaces information, it, it kind of alters how I perceive things. I would describe my cognition like fog, in the sense that it, it takes on a, an amorphous shape, a cloud-like shape, and, and, and in that fog, uh, I sometimes can't always, you know, interpret what people are trying to say to me or, 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 or understand what I'm, what I'm banging my head against, you know? I'm, I'm like a block. So there'll be times where I, I can't think, but then there'll be times where the fog uh, starts to turn into a storm. And then in that storm, I get manic energy where I'm excitable, I'm over the top, I'm, 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 I'm eager, I, I, wanna, I wanna go, 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 go. I just go on this like, manic rampage, you know? But then there'll be times where the fog kind of forms into rain. And then in that rain, ideas are formed. My brain will make associations freely and then I'll be able to focus effectively. I'll be able to tune into what I'm trying to do and, and, and tackle any task ahead of me. It's, 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 it's not like I'm necessarily in control of it. Sometimes it just happens to me. It's kind of like, like I'm possessed. You know, I'll just feel hypermanic, super lazy, or intensely focused. When I first met my subjects, I felt nervous for the first time, as I have not met much neurodiverse people before. I have been surrounded by many neurotypicals in my life, and I haven't been able to relate myself as much to a couple of people. Okay, a broad question. Um, how would you describe yourself? Broad question, but briefly describe your personality and traits. I'm, I'm respectful and kind to everyone around me, to, to people and to my family. I am like, at times, like very, sh like very shy from other people and I find it hard to socialize with other people even if I don't know them. I really love to be like living in a, like in a clean in environment where I like, like I like everything to be well organized and neatly tidied and yeah, just living more of a clean in environment than a, than a big mess in a way. And, and yeah, like even get like really nervous when and feel so much with anxiety when things get so stressful and scary and but apart from that I see myself as a really good person and I I really am trying through things that I, I work on and yeah I feel like I'm a really good person to to, to everyone. Uh, spontaneous, very outgoing um, and willing 
to try new things. I'm, you know, fairly positive. You know, I think, yeah, no, I'm just very, like, energetic in some senses. I mean, you know, I'm, I can sit quietly, but no, I'm just, like, very amped, if that's a bit of an ambiguous term. But yeah, just, I'm very geared to go. I'm an energetic person. Sometimes I'm pretty energetic. I know one thing for sure. I may be dumb, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> and, um, and um, why would you say that? Why would I say that? Um, I have a tendency to, uh, to act silly, to do dumb things, um, to not think sometimes. Uh, to, to my, I'll have lapses in memory. I, I don't think of myself as a unintelligent person. I have, you know, some wit to me, but I'm not, I'm, I'm definitely not utilizing it effectively. Is it intentional or do you, is it uncontrollable or does it seem to, um, or, or is it something that, um, you don't have any control over. Well, I, I feel like I do have, con I feel like everybody is in control of, of um, what they can, what they do, or they, everybody has control over what um, they're doing. In regards to myself, I like to, I like to play, you know, the joker, the, the, the class clown, the comedian for various reasons. Some is because I'm bored and I want to energize myself and other reasons I like to um, lighten the mood because otherwise I feel uncomfortable myself. As they were talking, I didn't want to interrupt as I believed something would go wrong. I often played with my fingers and even looked around the classroom to cope with stress. A quick side note, before I recorded my interviews, I had these production meetings with my subjects first. I did this so I could become familiar with the subjects beforehand and determine what interview questions to ask them. When you were a child, were you treated differently at school or at home? Did any teachers or students or parents see you as a problem? Well, well, not, well not really. Like, um, like every teacher I, I was with, they were they, they were they were like really nice to me. They were really respectful on 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 who I am with my condition. Back when I was in grade one, my first grade teacher, she um she didn't seem that nice, and um she didn't quite like understand on what kind of person I was with my with my spectrum, and she was a little awful. But but more like but more the fact that she didn't she wasn't really quite understanding. Like I think. To her, I was like a bit odd, and she didn't quite understand it at all. Like she didn't quite understand me on the spectrum. And same goes to like with everyone, like my classmates and friends. They um, a few of them didn't quite understand me, but but they but they didn't like judge me. They they sort of liked who I am, and they got they started to get to know me, and they kind of like they kind of see sides of different sides of me that seems very interesting like they don't see me like as a problem and my family have been have been like really like really supportive um they, they didn't notice anything wrong with me they knew who I was because obviously they just do what they do to find ways to help me and how I could still feel like I'm normal with everyone else and my dad he's he loves me for who I am he's just I think just too like he's not awful but he just he doesn't quite understand me on how I handle things a bit, but but that still but that doesn't stop him from trying. He does try and try to make things better and good for me. So, yeah. I was always told by teachers to stop distracting the other students because um, you know I just do all my work and then start talking to everyone. Sometimes I got like kind of pushed up a bit because I was doing all my work quickly, but then. Um, yeah, yeah, I got treated differently at school. My family has just known me as very like spontaneous and yeah, that's just Luke. Yeah, that's fine, you know. Yeah, I think it's just like people who don't know me kind of think I'm a bit interesting as a character. Well, you did say um, in the production in the production meeting that um, 
you're easily quick to see distractions pop up in your eye line and get stimulated mm. very severely. Yeah. And like, set an example, like when you're on a computer, if there are people suddenly laughing, your brain suddenly goes off course. Yeah. Yeah, no, like just, yeah, just anything external. Like, I mean, when I'm sitting in the lounge room and my housemate's like watching Facebook on his desktop monitor and I'm sitting there on the couch, not even looking at the monitor and I hear people talking, like, I just instantly tune into what the words are and I'm just like listening to it. It's kind of like being able to catch everything when you're only trying to actually catch one thing and hold on to it. But then something else happens and you quickly like, you've caught it, so then you just catch the next thing. It's like always being prepared for like hearing something and ready to respond. Is there something that makes you um, pretty talkative or um, really into, um, or really into um, trying out new things? Yeah, um, like just someone coming up to me and talking to me randomly will get my attention and get me talking. And I mean, I'm a little bit reserved from like, you know, just previously just going out and doing things straight away. But like, if something just happens around me, I'll just like comment on it. You know, I'm like a commentator off my environment. I'm just sitting there waiting for something externally to happen. My childhood was uh, different to say the least, I'd say. Uh, not in that I'm built different sort of way, but I, I, I was raised with a Thai mother and an Australian father. Um, Mum was a Buddhist, Dad was an atheist. They sent me to a Catholic school, two Catholic schools. I was seen differently in a, f a few ways, um, but one way in particular was that I would fail to keep up. I would I would lag behind, and it would it would be due to the fact that I was um, disengaged with my work. I wasn't enthralled by it. I remember one teacher said. Oh, yeah, Aiden, you, 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 you're very clever, you're very clever, but you just don't do the bloody work, do you? You're just, you're lazy. Do you always want to be mediocre? I've looked up, um, I had no idea what mediocre is. I looked it up and mm. it means of only average quantity, not very good. Yeah, yeah, I was an underachiever. I'm lazy, I'm, I'm, I am lazy. I don't think you are lazy. Oh, well, I appreciate that, Messina, but I, um, I think I don't engage myself as much as I should. But I'm trying, I'm always trying. Before university, I had a similar experience where I was treated differently in the education system. From 2006 to 2013, I went to six different schools and this was because teachers saw me as a danger to myself and others. They didn't even know what autism is and therefore kept me out of their neurotypical territory. When I was like five years old, I went to like, I went to like five different schools in, in like three years. But I don't know why I went to those schools though. My parents told me that they um, have had problems with teachers at those schools as they didn't want to take in somebody that was different or that was on the autism spectrum. There were some teachers that um, I liked at um, only very few of the schools. When I was little, I had no idea why I was even moving between the schools anyway. And I had no idea I was different from other people. Are those teachers in primary school? Yeah, yeah, grade one is, yeah, yeah, grade one is primary school. Right. Sina, how do you think today went? I think filming interviews today for the first time in this documentary, it, um, did work out well at a satisfactory standard. We did, what went well is my interview subjects answering, answering the questions as well as um, organizing, as well as organizing the interview for, for at least um, a specific time. I don't know if I can get things done on time because the thing is my interview subjects we don't know what's happening with them or if they're going to adhere to our schedule. There is a similarity of my experience in um, studying compared to Callum's. I met a, um, I did come across some teachers that, um, that weren't that nice to me, but Callum had um, only 
I only came across one teacher in year one. With primary school and high school, my experience is, um, I'm very limited to only specific things at primary school and primary school and high school and there's not really much stuff I like when I'm being taught when I'm being taught things at primary school and high school. When you go to un when I'm at university, I have this I have this freedom of learning whatever subjects I can um, I can further study into. And how did you when was the first time you were interested in filmmaking? The first time I was interested in filmmaking was around the time where I had a, um, I first got an iPod in 2011 and I shot these little personal videos on my, on my iPod from, a, from 2012 to 2014. But then I started to um, get into the habit of making these, um, making these little videos and I ended up getting more and more interested in making YouTube videos and that's how my love for film began. My autism spectrum doesn't really affect my studying, although there are some times that um that there are that there are weird noises in class and that distract that distracts me. What do you like about university? I like really enjoyed like like seeing things like like how teachers show things like uh, that that's already been done before that gets me inspired on thinking what I could do and how I was felt I felt really brave when I opened up to them to tell them like who I am and what I'm diagnosed with with AS with ASD and and they and they really well respected for who I am and and they, they make sure they find ways to help me to make sure I feel comfortable in knowing that I really do want to be part of this course and not get so scared or nervous or shy or, or get filled up with anxiety if things get too much. They really want me to like really be part of the class and really like get to understand the experience through the course and with the university. And, and I think what I really like with the university is how having an access worker with me in class really helps me to like make sure I stay on topic and and like just and also writes notes down so I make sure I don't forget anything when I come home and yeah you know, just like like someone to help me to keep on track and make sure I'm still with the class even if I lose focus like an access worker is what makes me like university as well I'm enjoying all the new things I'm seeing I like I like seeing new things. It's, it's a bit boring when you see the same thing all the time, but like, like what the teachers are talking about, like even just the like, the things you don't anticipate, like who's going to have banter and why and over what. Like, there's a lot of classes that are actually somewhat amusing because different like classmates that are friends with each other just all like to have their own little jokes and things like that. Um, and I, I I enjoy uni. I mean, like it's a little bit busy, but. That's kind of expected. So yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I like it. I like that I get to meet lots of people. I like meeting with people. The socializing is very exciting to me. It's very fun to talk and engage and, and you know, bounce off ideas with people and, and learn things. I feel I learn best with people. It's a, it's a two-edged sword because there'll be times where I'm, I'm learning a lot from my teachers and my peers about what we're doing and then there'll be other times where I'm really struggling to learn anything around anyone else because they'll be talking about random crap and, and I'll get sucked into what they're doing when I'm supposed to be focusing on one task at hand and yeah, it's, it's, um, it's good and bad. More so good. I like just being able to go over there and um, do the thing that I'm really interested in. I, I also like um, learning about my favourite area of interest and doing the assessment tasks and really putting myself out there to, to be prepared for, for my interest-based career of film. I do dislike um, 
having having to do classes that um that go for very long. There was one class that I had from five o'clock to six thirty. As it as it adds to the time that I'm out, I do have a long commute from um from my home to Swinburne though. Okay, um, what do you not like about university? So when it comes to assignments and topics, I, it's really like the timing, like, I feel a bit rushed when I'm really, and struggled when I have to try to get something done, even if I get lost with it, and so I kind of don't like it when teachers, sometimes they get a little off topic, but I kind of get why they did that. It's just to, like, inspire the students, which I do like sometimes, but most of the times, I get distracted and I, my head is just, it's like somewhere else, like, and I don't know when unexpectedly when the teacher says like, okay, like, like, bam, let's, let's get to work. Like, I don't mean to, I want to be focused. I want to pay attention. I really want to be part of the class. I never liked doing like a university course online. I mean, like, it's really tough, like to be by yourself with a computer and if, and like if I get distracted or I get lost, if the teacher gets off topic and, and I don't know what's happening, it's hard to have like no one there to help me. Like I find it really important that I really want to stay focused in class at university, like really. And I don't mean to get off track or like get like unfocused, just I want to be focused. It's just things like that, it's like with online or in class, like yeah. Also not really, I don't like the overwhelming amount of work provided every week because I don't do things like that. I like to sit down and binge all of my studies in like one go. Like I, I've got the time to do it but I'm just not willing to just, I will do all the practicals, I will do everything but um, I'd like uni and think it's perfect if there's just one assessment, just one variable for every unit and then I could just like stare at each one and go I know I'm opening that one next you know. That would be great, that'd be handy. Yeah, I don't like how many how many separate assessments there are to hand in on different dates because it's very hard to keep up with. Yeah, I do have a calendar. Yeah, I do have a calendar with um with um and I write assessment dates on it. I also have a yeah. list of assessment tasks that I have to do. Yeah, does it help? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I wish I could do that. That that's like my fantasy, but I just don't ever get around to it usually. When people aren't mindful of when a, the, the teacher is trying to speak or like, like communicate something, I get real annoyed. When people are just talking with any with blatant disregard for what the teacher's trying to say, that frustrates me because I'm trying to I'm trying to focus on what they're saying and then I get sucked onto them, and it, that just that pisses me off. You know, it, it, I don't mean that I don't suffer fools in the sense that I don't suffer people that that struggle to learn. I just hate when people just, just aren't trying to better the learning environment than, than just make it more difficult, you know? Okay. Looks like, um, God, you don't seem to like it when there are so many students talking in the background and the um, teacher is trying to teach something. Um, yeah. I've had that kind of, um, that kind of thing has happened to me too, and I'm often annoyed at it as well. Mm -hmm. I try to listen to, um, in class, when I try to listen to the teachers, there'll be classmates talking and I'm laughing in the background, and um, I'm just like completely silent, trying to listen to the teacher. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a teacher's pet or anything like that, but we, we all paid money to get here. You know, like we're all here for a reason. We're all here trying to learn. And if people are just piss farting around. That annoys me. Although, now that I think about it, with um with ADHD and how um, lots of loud people suddenly talking in class drive you nuts. <laughs> Any distraction really would put someone off. It's not, it's not that I'm like too stressed out by loud sounds and noises too much. I don't have that, I don't have a lot of sensory issues. Except for when people touch my face. I hate when people touch, like face painting. When people like poking at your face and stuff, I hate that. I hate that so much. Um, but apart from that, I don't have too many issues with sensory distortion. Um, is there anything that you feel like that you've learned? Well, I've learned that um, shooting 
a B-roll is going to take a while. Also, backing up video files, that also takes a while also. I'm making this as a participatory documentary film intended for four subjects, but I have no idea if I'm gonna ever use this many subjects in my in my documentary because they have their things on as well and I don't know what is going on with them. We can learn from what has happened in our interviews and production process to, um, to better teach our audience. Tina, do you find conducting these interviews overstimulating? I do somewhat um, find it overstimulating. I'm not even so sure what that word means. So you say Overstimulating is like when you say a crowd of people sounds like a jet engine to you. It's too much. Yes. And the bright lights, they hurt your eyes, whereas, well, I'm sure everyone else in the room, it's not, they don't seem all that bright, maybe? Um, yeah, of course. Do you find any aspect of the interview like that? Um, like amplifying? Those lights I find overstimulating. Okay. Some things that might be, um, Regardless, as fine in the neurotypical world is really intense for me. When you walk out of the interview room, you can hear like um, a lot of a lot of things, like the escalator, the engines downstairs, and there's also equipment as well. You have to take a lot of um, equipment, and I have a responsibility to to make sure that my crew doesn't to make sure that my nothing bad happens. I was somewhat shy when interviewing my subjects, but as I kept contacting subjects and meeting them more in person, I started to feel more comfortable around them. I wanted to explore something with my ADHD subjects, something that I seem to have and something that autistic people often have in general. Special interest an intense focus, dedication, and fascination on specific objects, topics, and discussions. You know, I like just fixing things, I like cleaning things, I like sitting there, I like, you know, helping people, you know? Um, like, other people probably think of it as a chore, but even, like, just seeing someone who, like, needs a hand, it's like, hey, you need a hand? Yeah, sure thing, you know? Um, I guess that kind of, like, links back to the outgoing thing. I genuinely enjoy doing everything. Um, even down to just learning. I like learning. You know what? That's a quick way of like encapsulating it because it's not specific as to what I'm learning. I just enjoy new information. I just like doing things. You know, I, I really, really, when I'm doing nothing for the day, even appreciate it if like my housemate just says, hey man, can you clean this? It's like, yeah, finally something. You know, sometimes I end up with nothing to do and then I'm like, well, what's next? I like it when things give me feedback. I don't, you know, my girlfriend likes to watch TV and like, I don't mind watching TV shows if I'm engrossed in it or like maybe more of a documentary because at least it's, you know, it'll have my attention because I'm like trying to learn something. But um, yeah, I like things that just require feedback. You know, I don't have many jobs that I say no to when people ask me. I'm just like, okay. It's not like I'm the maid of the house, but I just, yeah, I just, um, I like, I like structure. And the thing is like when there's a lot of things like messy or untidy it's like fine but then there's just extra tabs to take care of and you know like with the computer you've only got so much RAM to process with and it's like I can't like the less variables there are the easier it is and like like I mean maybe it's just a, a controlled way of just making things easier for myself but yeah I but um I really really appreciate structure down to the stage where it's like if someone just writes me a list of things with dot points it's like yeah I'll do that. I like playing video games. It's a bad habit. Yeah, I, I like video games, but I don't. I don't like to play ones that that last too long. I don't play story games. I don't. I don't indulge in that. that, that yeah, I love movies. Um, I like audio books. I like to. I would love to be able to read well, but I. I don't. I can't tolerate sitting down too long. I always lose myself in the sentences. And, and then I start reading the words one by one. So I listen to audiobooks, and that, that's good. Um, I would just, I would describe myself as a hardworking and um, committed and diligent person. I'm able to um, work in many things that um, I'm interested in, and like interested in 
film and television, I'm interested in doing anything I can to um, make sure it is done. What I like doing outside of school is, um, is I do like watching videos um, on my computer, but I also like to, um, to write up and think of a couple of um, film ideas and, and looking up things that are related to my condition. And also looking up trains and um, metro maps and also looking at maps in general is something I like too. Geography has always been my, one of my interests, something I'm fascinated in. When I was seven years old, I couldn't talk properly and I also displayed behaviours that regular people wouldn't. I went to an autism specialist who studied my behaviours and at 10 years old, I was formally diagnosed on the autism spectrum. When I got to know Luke, he seemed to have a fascinating story on how he received his diagnosis. Yeah, I think I've met, heard about your girlfriend before in um, during a production meeting, and yeah. you mentioned that she was quick to drag you into getting a diagnosis yeah. of ADHD. Yeah, she was. Um, she cared enough about me, but she was just more so frustrated because at first we used to have a lot of arguments and it was like just just over silly things, things that like obviously I didn't like intend to do. They just like happen, you know, forget a little bit of short term memory and stuff. But um, then, yeah, she was actually really supportive and just like said, well, you know, you can't keep continuing making the same mistakes or at least if you are going to at least know what, why you're making them so then you can try and work around it. And yeah, she was just really good in that sense and she kind of pushed me because I was a bit reluctant to get diagnosed with anything because I, you know, I'm just hectic as it is, you know, I'm just a fun person, you know. Um, and then yeah, she just said, no, I really think this would be good for you to help you just structure things a little bit more or at least understand what's happening. She started realising that after a year that it wasn't something that I could control and I was just choosing not to. I think she realised, she was like, oh no, he's serious. Like, that's actually something he does. Can't get upset at him about that because it'll lead to the same argument we had yesterday and both things have the same outcome of just, I didn't mean it. And since then, anyways, she's actually been very understanding. In fact, she's kind of, she kind of did her own research as to what ADHD is like and then she kind of works with me to just kind of be a bit of my assistant. Like she's not my secretary or anything like that, but she also will be the one to pull out a laptop when we're like planning something. Or she's just trying to get me to plan it. She's like, okay, so, uh, and she'll like just try to do it for me because she goes like, if I leave you alone, you're not gonna do this. She's a bit of like my coach and mentor in some senses. How to be like, you know, normal. How to just do things the way that's like the expected mean, median and mode. Yeah, that's pretty nice of what, um you and your girlfriend um, went through. Can I please um, have some? Uh, yes, you can. Thank you. Oh. Why is there none coming out? Why is there nothing coming out? Thank you. There we go, and there we go. And here yeah, I go. She's amazing. Yeah, of course. Cool. I um, don't know where I'd be without her. Yeah. You did say um, you were reluctant in um, getting a diagnosis and said that you were like a, a fun person. Yeah. That's like, as if, um, did you see, um, yourself as like um, a fun person, as if nothing was ever wrong with you? No, I always knew there was, there were things wrong, but it was more so just the, like some people like to put a name to things and stuff. And like, that's fine, but I just wanted to feel like I'm me. And like, at the end of the day, what you see is what you get. I'm very, like, I can't change myself in any sense. So I was just like, you know, the idea of, I mean, this was before I realised it would actually be helpful to get a diagnosis, but I was more so just reluctant because I was like, so now I'm going to know the name to whatever is causing the issue, but I'm like, but the issue is still there. So I was like, do I need to know the answer? Eventually she was like, no, you need to, or at least it's good to go and have someone tell you how you can, or just confirm that I have ADHD, so I'm not obviously trying to do things that are or aren't specific to it, I could actually like kind of tailor what I should work on. So eventually I like, yeah, I wasn't as reluctant.
but at the start I didn't really want to be diagnosed or anything like that. As my interview subjects were still talking, most of them told me they have similar experiences, traits and tendencies to my own. As I edited this documentary, I started to think that me and my subjects may have more in common than I expected. Are there any positive things about your condition? Does it benefit your skills or interests in any way? I feel I'm really good at making sure keeping things organised and what helps me to find things, to know where things are, is when, when drawers or cupboards, they just have things like labelled with names so I know where things are. And what I'm really good at is, it's a real gift I have with my autism, is, um, is like memorising lines from like, like movie quotes from films or from TV shows, like I often tend to say them like, like almost over and over again. Like I, I'm good at remembering that, and I'm, I am really good at like also remembering what happens and what's seen from what movie or TV show. Like I, I think that is a good gift, and like I'm really creative with ideas and stories, tellings that I want to hopefully bring to life in film. I like to take some skills with my creativity, like with story ideas and uh, drawings, or as well as like really good ideas that could come to life and use that to, to be part of in the experience of filmmaking, or I feel like I can do anything. Like I could be part of a backstage crew. I could, I could create, I could make a really incredible short film and uh, with an amazing story. And I, and I could say I can do like, like again, with me memorizing lines from movies, I, I cut, and the way I act towards them, it makes me think about the idea of acting as well. I kind of like acting, and acting is something I feel like I can do with a skill and really bring a, a performance to life for a character or, and yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I can engross myself in whatever I'm doing to this stage where like no one, I mean, you can get my attention, but it's also like, like once my attention is like hyper fixated on something, I mean, it might expire at some stage and I might move on to another thing, but like, but I know I've got this like skill and ability to just like push my mind, like with infinite energy, you know? So I've left myself a lot of times to last minute do a lot of assessments and I've had the the pleasure of passing everything. I haven't really failed assessments, you know, because they were overdue and I couldn't submit. So I end up, um, I can study very quickly, which kind of makes me complacent. I think being persistent is a real ability. It's, I mean, it's not necessarily the best sometimes because I get distracted, but I do think very quickly, thanks to having so many thoughts all the time, you know, otherwise I just stare blankly at everything. So sometimes, at least if I, if I can channel what I'm thinking about towards a subject, I can probably do it a lot better. But the idea of like channeling my brain into that's like half the time not gonna work. <clears throat> you need to motivate me by saying you're gonna fail me and just give me like a two day deadline and I'll start doing everything. In the production meeting, you did mention that um, with your distractions, when you look at something and then look away, a 30 second time it goes off in your head telling me to tell me to look at what happened again? Yeah, so like my train of thought is very short. So like even when we've been talking a few times, like you'll ask me four questions and like, I mean, yeah, like some people forget, but like sometimes it'll be like just halfway through a sentence. And if I don't like stick to the topic I'm trying to work on at a computer or I'm talking about, I'll just kind of lapse and then my memory will just like reset and I'm like, oh, what am I doing again? I'm just gonna like stare at it and then go, like be like Inspector Gadget. I'm trying to like investigate how I got to where I am. I'm like, how did this happen? What am I doing again? And I'm like, okay, cool. I think I'm fun. I think I'm a cool guy. There's downsides to that too. Impulse control issues. You struggle not to, to make bad decisions when you're out and about. And I also get free ideas, I think because, like I said earlier, my brain's a big cloud. An idea will suddenly spawn out of that free association and then I'll get something good. It's rare, but there'll be really good ideas sometimes.
If I'm in, in, if, if, if I'm excited about something, if I'm interested in something, I feel like it works to my favor because then I hyperfixate. ADHD people have a tendency to hyperfixate on things, so I will get sucked in if I'm if I like what I'm doing. I'll get really excited. I'll work on it for like seven hours. I'm able to feel thing. I'm able to um feel things much more than um the average neurotypical person. I can also hear things from a, um, a long distance that neurotypicals can't really often hear. Whilst this spectrum also helps me to focus on a specific task, I'm pretty interested in film directing, but there's also having to deal with people that don't really understand me that well as well. All those negatives are pretty external. Is there, um, I'm not sure if this is probably a complicated question, but is there anything you wish could um, happen to different people like you? I guess I don't want them to see us like we're a problem. Like, I mean, like really, get to know us or really understand us more before before you ever consider like judging us or it will say like no we're we're awful people or we're weird people like it would definitely hurt us like I I wouldn't like that but I guess I want everyone to treat us like we're equals like we're all we may be different but we're, we're like all the same in our own different way we've got enough going on where we're happy and I don't think like many people really care but it's more so like the external environment around like I wouldn't mind it if people, so you've got two groups of people, you've got people with ADHD and then people who don't have it. And some people who don't have it are understanding, but there are some people who aren't understanding. And on, this, on the flip side, you do get people who also lean on the ADHD thing a little bit too far and it's kind of unfair on everyone with it. I'd like it if people had a deeper understanding of what ADHD actually is and it would be good because then people wouldn't have a pretense as to the person who I am because I actually get prejudged before people actually see me doing something. Like someone might hear that I'm really good at something but they'll kind of see my behaviour doing other things and they're kind of like, oh, what the... I've had convos with a couple other people and like most people get it but even then others as well. Like. It's just like, oh, you can, you can focus and do better. And it's like, no, you actually can't. You're just expected to snap out of it. And it's like, no, no, I'm built like this. There's many parts of the world that are built only by, um, by a specific kind of people. And um, yeah. there's a word to describe, um, there's a word to describe people that don't have ADHD or don't, or isn't on the autism spectrum. It's yeah. called neurotypical. Neurotypical, yeah, okay. Yeah, most of our world is built most of um, our cities and towns are built by neurotypical people, especially the social structures as well. Yeah, I think, I think some of that is why I don't actually get too phased by it because although I wish people would think differently, it's like, well, I'm kind of in the realm of like a majority of these people. It's like, I couldn't expect everyone to be like me, but, but yeah, no, it's, yes, it's built from a lot of neurotypical people and a lot of people, I guess it's natural to assume that, that people would expect their environment to continue that way. I wish for them the strength to change what they can and the, ex and the, uh, the ability to accept what they can't. I want people to not feel like they're locked into a box and that they are forced to, to deal with their symptoms their entire lives or, or, or to, to, to suffer them. There'll be, there'll be times where it'll be rough and they, you know, they're doing the best they can but it's, it's not going anywhere. Then, then at those times I, I wish for them to be able to accept themselves and unconditionally love themselves. One thing I'd like to change in the court of public opinion, ADHD people aren't listening. It's like I'm trying to but sometimes there's just that delay, that, that, that pause in my brain. I'm not ready to speak. I hate, I hate it when people say like, oh, he's just so, so aloof. 
and dumb. He's not. He doesn't listen. It's like I'm trying. I I lack the neurochemistry um, to effectively respond in people's minds about ADHD. Or, that's what I'd like to destigmatize. I wish that people would um that we should become more um tolerant and understanding and patient with each other. Be judgy. It it makes us feel like we don't belong anywhere and. There is nothing wrong with us because we're good at a lot of things as well. And what could um, neurotypicals do better that would help with your specific needs? For people like us who want to join any course like, like film and television or security or, or any other course like maybe even the arts department or really understand them to like why they want to be part of this, the, the course that they're, they're going for and see what they're good at and really like see, like really understand them before judging. And that's something we don't want like people to be left out no matter what their condition or disability or diagnosis they're at. Like, and even though sometimes having autism is a bit of a struggle, but you always try to think like, they're still like good in autism as well. Like you see the positive within that. Um, yeah, like just be supportive, like not, no one has to have an, a particular opinion or they can have their own opinion, but if people are just like neutral and just supportive and it's like, hey, you, do you need a hand? Because like I ask people if they need a hand when I'm just like, like helping someone carry something off the bus or something. It's like, yeah, sure thing. Yeah, easy shopping bags, bye. You know, but it'd be nice if someone like actually sees that like I'm a little bit, you know, maybe just struggling on a very simple step. Not that I can't do it, but it's like, just don't treat my questions as if they're silly, it's, you know? I like it if people just like humour the questions and thoughts people have. I like it if like, normal, like other people just like listen without a pre-expectation of you just being, in, being silly or something. But to be specific, neurotypical. But, you know, in general, I just like it if everyone was objective. Yeah, um, what do you mean by um, objective? Being objective, I think, is just not putting your own personal bias into something and it's actually just trying to learn Objective means um, not influenced by, yes, by personal feelings or opinions, and considering and representing facts. Yes. Yeah. That's but it. That's that's it. Yeah. Just listen or um, be patient, because I'm trying. I'm trying to 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 keep up, to stay engaged. So I'd like people to um, to look at me as an individual instead of just a just a label. Yeah, I'm expecting the same thing to happen with me too. My, my autism spectrum should not be seen as a problem. It should be um, seen as a, it should be seen as a way of, as a way of being human. Just the way you operate. Yeah, sure. I wish um, they could, they give me direct instructions and also just um, being honest with me as I don't really get, I don't really understand jokes or expressions and or like metaphorical language and figurative language because I'm, I'm often very literal and direct minded of things and it's hard for me to understand any metaphors, any speech, any um, figures of speech, any jokes really because my brain doesn't, isn't really um, expressive and figurative oriented as much. And even if people are direct with me, there are some words that um, I don't know also. I'm still learning what many different words mean, as well as phrases also. I sometimes have trouble figuring out how to put things in a structured sentence. Yep. Being patient with me and also giving me direct instructions is the number one priority for, for what neurotypicals can do with me to better suit my specific needs. When I started making this documentary film, I had no idea how it was going to turn out because of limitations. And also, I don't know what my subjects were going to say in the interviews also. What if it wasn't a school project and a proper film um, done outside of school? I'll probably make it about adults, about how they see the world and how they feel they are, um, they are being treated in society and what they wish to change is 
something we need to see more often in mainstream media, and especially also how they experience and see things as well. I have learnt about that our experiences are very different from one another, and that we still have a purpose in this world. We're good at many things in this world. The so-called annoying behaviour, it's also not their fault because because of the way they process things and also the traits that they have also. I would like to say that um, we don't need to be told to act normal because we already know how to behave well in, in certain scenarios. There is nothing wrong with our condition. It's your guys' perception on us and also ignorance and, and the stigma that is the actual problem here. My goal for this documentary was to get to students and teachers that seemed that were also different and to also get them to talk about their, talk about how they experienced the, the world. I had no idea how my documentary is going to turn out, so I had like a neutral perception on, on my subjects. When people watch this film, I hope that they would, um, that they would understand that, um, I am interviewing people that have these that have these unique experiences, but that those different people who make those documentary films, they also have a experience as well. And what I enjoyed the most about directing is is thinking about the concepts I could produce as well as contacting people I never met before. The directing experience has been pretty good so far. I think I have learned that um if you do go to a good university, you can really um, engage yourself in your interests. And if you do contact people that are different like you, you can really um, open yourself up to them and they can open themselves up to you as well. And we can like engage with each other without any sort of miscommunication or tension involved. Yes, I am happy that um, I got an opportunity to meet other neurodivergent people that are just as different like me. It's really helped me to connect with many different people. How I would see the um, autism spectrum portrayed in um, the documentary? Well, the autism spectrum isn't just isn't just this one person. It's a mixture of um, different conditions, and they're different from one another.